hear me? Yes, yes. How are you? Oh, hi, good. How are you, Greg? I'm doing good. I wanted to thank you for the weekend class. Uh, you gave me an idea to add a service to my center. Oh, good. How's the center going? It's going. Uh, it's a little slow on the uptake, like any business, but I've got some clients that came through and a couple calls and stuff. And I wanted to say I really appreciate um, Sam's uh, energy and effort into the newsletter because I'm working on mine and it, it takes a lot of work. Yes, it does. <laughs> so so she was so proud. Sam. She she changed it up a little bit and used a new template. And so um, that that newsletter is her baby. She she loves it when you guys notice. So Yeah, I, I can understand that. <laughs> So a uh, few questions for me, um, mm -hmm. and this should be pretty short, I think. Okay, so in terms of essential oils, you said sometimes it's better for kids not to use it because of the dosage or the strength? Well, it depends on the oils. There's a handful yeah. of oils that work really good for kids. And when we're saying kids, it's usually about eight years old and under. You know, even at seven and eight, it's starting to change. But like, for example peppermint or eucalyptus globulus, a little too strong for a little kid. And so there's a handful of oils. Um, thyme linalol is very good for um, uh, anything that's like immune related, infectious disease, um, liver function, anything of that nature. Thyme linalol is the go-to thing for a little kid. Um, anything respiratory, um, myrtle or grain, uh, green myrtle, are two really good choices. They're they're respiratory, they open things up, but they're not overly stimulating, you know, because that's the thing with a child is like it can be a little too overstimulating. Like for example, if you take eucalyptus globulus and you put it like right on their chest, like you would think that it opens up the the breath, but after a while it's too strong and it will actually make the breath a little bit shallow. And and so it can be a little too much. Um, you know, if you had to do it in a pinch, you'd put it more on the backside between the shoulder blades rather than on the front side. Um, Roman chamomile, very good for inflammations, liver function, colic, you know, even when they're throwing little fits and things like that. Um, lavender, incredibly relaxing. Lavender is like, like Valium to a baby. Like it's just, um, very, very relaxing. Now, the key is when, when you're putting it on the baby, put it on the arms and legs first before the abdomen. Because if you go right to the abdomen, the baby will have like a protective mecha mechanism where they tighten up a little bit and then they won't unwind. But if you undo the arms and legs first, they'll just completely unwind. Um, so lavender and another one that they tend to like that's antispasmodic and soothing, soothing to the emotions and things is um, mandarin. Man mandarin works really well for babies. Um, when they get a little moody and they get hard to redirect, we use um, African bluegrass a lot. Um, uh, Melissa for really bad fits and nightmares and things like that. But a lot of times you can knock it out with the Roman chamomile. So can can kids that say eight years old and you know to eighteen or whatever can they do the salt baths and cook baths? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Even and, even a little baby, you just cut down the amount of salt and everything. But after eight, you start kind of treating them like a like an adult. You just don't give them quite the dosage, and then by the time they're ten or eleven, you know, game on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, now I remember you said with animals that are uh, ashes, we could use basil. And basil is a solid choice for animals, and and keep in mind that um, oils are never for being around birds. Like birds, they don't their lungs can't process the oils or incenses or anything like that. So um, th that's why sometimes you'll hear me go, "Do you have a bird?" You know, when we're talking to somebody about like treating an animal. But um, um, basil, lavender, chamomile, um, even valerian or spikenard can be used pretty easily. But there's several oils that um, are not good for an animal, like wintergreen, birch, things like that. Um, so I'd keep it really, like, really simple. Um, we had several, several people had animals that had se separation anxiety. 
And one of the ones that worked for him is we'd have them diffuse a marjoram and, and that, that seemed to work. And so like, I'd, I'd kind of keep it in that realm unless they were dealing with something kind of more specific, but um, I, can, I can try to go through and pull together some notes about things to not do with animals just so you could kind of troubleshoot but it's a lot like a kid like you you usually don't have to be is um aggressive with a pet as you would like somebody who has a health issue you just kind of keep nudging their their body along getting them to rest because you can almost tell they either get really anxious or really lethargic um uh as as they get sick and so that's like one of the indicators um the thing also with an animal which you probably know but you you always watch the amount of urination that they're doing like how much water are they drinking or are they urinating um you want to watch for like potential kidney issues especially in dogs well i have a couple of uh, cats animals that came through my center and they, you know, they're pretty sick, you know, tumors and stuff like that. So they're pretty anxious. And I remember mm -hmm. what you said about the basil. I would try basil. Uh, yeah, I would, that's yeah. the. So would I put like two drops on the palm and then rub it against their spine? I remember exactly. Said, yeah, a couple drops and then go like against the fur from the toe. I usually the have head. the parent, yeah, pet parent do it because they're so anxious. Yeah, yeah. But okay. And yeah. then um, in terms of application, this is for adults, for helicism on scars. Uh -huh. do, you, do you put like a couple drops on cotton balls and then on the scar? I, honestly, unless their skin is like crazy sensitive, I just drop three or four drops on the spot and you just kind of rub it all over the scar area and just let it dry. Oh. Yeah. And then would you do that? I guess it would depend on how old the scar is or how deep. Would you do it daily? I, I would do it daily for a little while. Um, if it's like a fresh scar or like a scar that's really keloided and gotten really thick, you could do it two or three times a day. But usually with treating a scar, you usually don't need more than one bottle. Like, you know, unless it's some like crazy surgery that like really opened up the abdomen and there's all kinds of internal scarring or something. Um as far as the scar tissue, usually a bottle, every once in a while, two bottles, but you know, after five mils, you're usually pretty solid with the scar. And I've, I've, I've taken things that have been really keloided and really thick and you keep applying it, applying it, applying it. And you know, the line is still there, but the keloid will, will diminish and the, the tightness and the heaviness and like the thickness, it just goes away. And it doesn't matter how long the scar is or how no, long it is. It could be a 40 or 50 year old scar. It could be a scar from last week. Wouldn't matter. Yeah, and I gave. When, when I get like a cut or something, you know, we just did this last week. I, you know, I was doing something I cut myself and uh, Samantha had, had one a couple of weeks prior and just dropped like helichrysum on it and I mean it takes the pain out it cleans it up and it kind of starts to close it and I still put a band-aid on it but just to cover it but um it it takes the pain out cleans it up reduces the inflammation if there's going to be bruising it reduces that it's just like a go-to thing for that and Samantha's you could actually kind of see the tissue starting to move together to close the bind so it helps it heal in a much, uh, like an accelerated rate. Um, now in the workbook uh, over the weekend, that you, gave us, mm -hmm. you have, you know, categories like body tonic and stuff, and then underneath you have conditions and then the list of oils. Mm -hmm. So can we convert those to like maybe to, to a salt bath or foot bath? You, you can. Um, part of part of what I did there is um, some things work a little bit better as a spray or a body tonic or a salt bath. And so they, they do overlap. But like what I put in each of those categories are like a choices. And so you can kind of drag them over and do that. But sometimes like something might be a great salt bath, but not a great spray. You, you know what I mean? Or not a great uh, like ointment or something. But man, it's really awesome as a salt bath. 
And so, um, you, you know, one that kind of does that for me, like, I don't know about for other people, lavender salt baths are amazing. Lavender ointment. I'm always like, eh, <laughs> eh. <laughs> it's nice, but it, but like there's 30 things that I could have done that was better, but in the salt bath, lavender salt bath is really nice. You know, so the application, sometimes there's, there's like shining stars, but you can always kind of overlap it. Yeah. Okay, last question. I'm working with a client right now. She actually brought her cat to the center. Uh, mm -hmm. The cat has a mass in the abdomen. But the client herself is a stage four breast and bone cancer survivor. And um, so I was talking to her about energetic cleansing um, and stuff like that. And I, she's open to... Uh, salt baths and essential oil. So I was wondering um, if there's something I can recommend for her to for herself. How, how long ago was the cancer? Uh, she's in remission for three years. Three years. Oh, good for her. Yeah. Um, she, her, yeah her a couple more years, she hits one of the markers, the five-year marker. Yes. Um, she said um, she went through radiation and chemo. And she got really, really sick from that. Yeah. And then her oncologist said to her, if you don't take this chemo pill the rest of your life, you're going to die. In okay, so run. I'm going to give you two choices. I'm going to say one, this would be ideal. And the ideal one would be um, helichrysum. And the reason um, lymphatic stimulant reduces inflammation, but part of the thing with like the chemo... Um, and going through all those treatments and everything, She's not it, doing that anymore. It, it, but but she went through it like you know years yeah. ago. So like there's there's an effect on the liver. So it will okay. help jumpstart some of the things with the liver that might have gotten compromised. And then on top of that, the helichrysum helps with um, even if she had a good attitude through through that whole situation, it was traumatizing. You know there was her before that, you know, that incident and then after. And the helichrysum kind of helps with the trauma of the situation as well. And I, I it, the helichrysum hits it on a lot of levels. But um, if, if cost uh, is a little bit too much, um, Palo Santo, do Palo Santo. So uh, helichrysum salt bath? Yeah, like 12, 15 drops. You know, a pound of salt, and once you know, she could, I mean, once a week. Or? I would do one to two times a week. I mean, she might feel so good; she might do more, but at, at least once a week. What's the max maximum? She daily, has? she could easily oh, do them daily. Wow. Yeah, I mean, rarely does somebody do that, but if she wanted to, daily. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, she's a real trooper. I, I like her. Anyways, yeah, that's all my question. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. You guys are welcome to come and teach anytime. Myself. Yeah, well, well, whenever we're there, I want to, I want to see the center. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. come, come. <laughs> Thank you. How how far away are you from Astara? Oh, like forty five minutes. Probably, yeah. I'm like ten minutes east of downtown LA. Oh, okay. Hey, I can make Chinatown and come seeing you yeah. all at once. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Get a palm reading. Done yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't been to Chinatown in ages. <laughs> oh, we, you know, we don't go there anymore because where I live, it's 98% Chinese. Oh, so what? whatever we need is here. And just right there? Yeah, yeah. Right. And then we have a what? lot of people who are really into foot massages and reflexology. And that's kind of where I got my uh, the idea from your class to do foot. Put that oh, nice. Yeah. 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 With a medical aroma therapy twist. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brian. You're so welcome.